Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Pastor, today is going to be—it's going to leak in a little bit into the political scene, and uh, and I wanted to ask you, you know, as Christians, how do we respond to the double standard that has been presented by our administration? For example, just recently, there was uh, uh, an event where uh, there were immigrants that were dropped off at Martha's Vineyard and were there what 44 hours and uh, and then they were shipped and so you you know the argument is uh, why, why weren't they housing them especially if it's you know they're talking about we're welcoming everybody that double standard how are we to respond and that's just one example how do we respond as Christians to things like that when things are unfolding right in front of us such as things like this? I think part of the um, call of a Christian is to speak out against injustice. You know, this, this is one of those complicated kind of situations in that they're, they are illegal. We have any country that's going to survive has to have laws and regulations, rules. And so uh, to see those rules and regulations flaunted with the open borders and the millions that have come across and the dilution of different states to try and uh, undoubtedly to try and and affect uh, future elections mm -hmm. is is a gross uh, miscalculation and is is truly uh, hip hypocritical in every way because you know on the one hand as as Mexican you know, my mom and dad, both Mexicans, my grandparents, all coming from Mexico. I, I see it kind of ironic that they took these brown-skinned people to a vineyard, you know. <laughs> well, are they going to put them to work or what, right? You know, maybe that's why they were happy uh, to arrive. But what I thought about that, and I thought how ironic that really is, to take them to a, a place that is one of the richest uh, areas of the entire country and for these people to say that oh we don't have room here for them not even in any of our inns I mean they 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 have so much room there so many empty rooms because it's not the tourist season mm -hmm. right now they very easily could have cared for these people and 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 yet I have to tell you John the hypocrisy of this is amazing to say, oh, you're using human beings as pawns and you took these 44 people and took them, or 50 people and took them to, to this, this, uh, this place where they can't stay. It's amazing how fast the, the uh, army was called in to remove them and, and to see the hypocrisy of these people who on the one hand, just the day before are saying, oh, we don't have room here, we can't help them. This is the richest place and one of the richest places in the whole United States, we can't help them. We don't have the money to help them. Well, wait a minute. You've received as a sanctuary, you have received government funds. Why are you saying you cannot help them? Your racism is showing itself for what it is. I have to say it that way because that's what it is. It's hypocrisy. And the fact that Biden, the president, has been for over a year, been taking people by cover of night and dropping them off in all these different cities and has done it and not a single liberal voice has spoken up and said, this is hypocrisy, why are you doing this? Why are you, they didn't say a word about it. Did you? All you can hear are crickets. Mm -hmm. So how does the church uh, respond? Well, one, we've always been ready to be of help to anybody in need of help. But also we have to cry out and call out and say, this is gross hypocrisy to, to claim that, uh, that the governor of Florida and the governor of, uh, of Texas, that they are acting with, uh, with a sense of uh, callousness towards those in need when they have thousands upon thousands in Texas that every day are coming across the border, every day are being allowed because the, the border czar hasn't ever even shown up there to do anything about it. To me, it's just, it's just hypocrisy. We need to vote these people out. We really do because they don't love the United States. They're not doing something to be of help to the United States. They're actually injuring the United States and they've been they've done this through their policies all along. 
So what does the church do? I think we teach the word of God. Mm -hmm. We tell people to live justly. We care for those who have need. Uh, we do those kinds of things. But we have to speak up and say, this is wrong. We need new officials. Amen. Basically, that's what we do. Amen. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and yes, and vote. What, uh, Vote the rascals out, John. <laughs> Vote them out. You know? It's become one of these things, and it's amazing to me. I mean, my heart has compassion and pity for, for the president, for Biden, but you, you, just yesterday when he was speaking to the United Nations, and he, 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 you feel sorry for this man because he, he doesn't really know where he's at. It's quite obvious. You know, my mama had dementia, you know, and, and I've seen dementia more than once. And I, I see the signs of it, and it's quite obvious that he has it. And to see him shaking hands with invisible people or to be directed, somebody is pulling the strings on our president puppet. That's what's taking place. And I think that if you don't see that, then you are willfully blind. That's what's taking place. And the idea of the next person stepping in to take over being uh, uh, Kamala Harris, that, that makes it even worse. And, and then the next person in line is Pelosi, that makes it even worse. So I'm serious when I say we have to wake up as a nation. You know, and seeing you asking a political question, the political answer, as I see it, is to vote them out. To bring in some people who haven't been tainted with the Washington hypocrisy, because there are a lot of rhinos, a lot of Republicans in name only out there who are doing what they can to keep their position. I honestly think part of the solution is term limits so that they don't make a living. They become millionaires off of taxpayers the way that they do. No, I think we need to vote them out. And I, I really do believe that we need to, uh, something has to be passed. Something has to be uh, um, established so that there are limits to the amount of time these people can, uh, they, they're just uh, sponging off American taxpayers. Billions and billions into the trillions and then giving bills that are saying, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna improve the inflation when in fact it's increasing it. We're not blind. I certainly hope Christians wake up because we have given away so many elections because Christians say, well, why, you know, especially California Christians, well, what good does my vote What's do? What's the use, yes. Well, my yeah. vote does good for me because I know that I'm not part of the problem. And those who are not voting are. Because we have millions of Christians who don't vote. We could actually stand up and we could say, listen, this is not the society we want. Where you're telling us to stay indoors while you're at the French laundry. Where you're telling us we can't get our hair cut while you're getting yours done by your special person who does it. Well, you're telling us that we have to make sacrifices while you're standing in front of your $20,000 refrigerator eating this very expensive ice cream? Where is your sensitivity? We're supposed to obey the law while your husband hits a, hits a car while drunk and nobody knows anything about it. No, no, this is terrible. What we're seeing is horrible, John. And I have strong feelings that the church doesn't very often hear, but I have very strong feelings because this is unjust. It's unjust. And, you know, there's going to be some ruffled feathers watching this and there be some comments. And, and I think by that assumption, they're assuming it's about Trump. No, it's not about Trump. It's about voting biblically. It's about what is right and what is wrong and doing what we can to make it right. Amen. You know, yeah, God raises up one and puts down the other. We know that. But I have been in a, in a republic like we have, I have responsibility to vote. And when I don't, I get the uh, I get the leadership that I deserve. Mm. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing You're with welcome. us. You're welcome. And uh, and again, uh, we'll see the the responses that we get from this. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Want to invite you guys to come out and join us on on Wednesday evening. Uh, we're gonna have a time of worship and in, in God's Word. Invite your friends and family to come on out, and uh, we do look forward to uh, seeing you guys come out. And also Sunday. 8.30 and 10.45 as our Sunday morning services. Invite a friend to come on out. Pastor, thank you again okay. so much. Thank you guys for tuning in and God bless you.